Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. What is up, you guys? Welcome to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Cynthia. Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you all are having a very strong start to your day or evening or whatever time you are tuning in to this episode right now. I'm having a fabulous day. Um, although I didn't really get uh, the best sleep, I don't know why every time I go to bed Sunday night, I get really paranoid and nervous that I'm not going to wake up on time at 4 a.m. to teach at 5 a.m. And I don't know if it's because the last, you know, prior nights before having to wake up that early, like I haven't been waking up early. So my body clock and my circadian rhythm is a little bit off and trying to force myself to go to sleep so early on a Sunday when the last two to three nights prior to that Sunday, I've been sleeping really late. If that makes sense, does it make sense? I hope you guys are following with what I'm saying. Anyway, so yeah, I just like kept waking up at night, like First of all, I was sweating because I had that huge weighted blanket on me, which I talked all about the benefits of weighted blankets, which you should tune into right after you're done listening to this episode, by the way. It's called Weigh You Down, episode 361. 361. And anyway, so yeah, I just kept waking up. It was one of those nights where I just kept waking up. I was like, oh my God, I hope like my, I kept double checking like, is my alarm on? Uh, did I set it for 4 p.m. or 4 a.m.? Um, is my volume turned all the way up? Because girl, waking up that early, I need the volume to the max. Like when I hear my alarm, I almost need it to anger me by how loud it is. If it's like a little baby tone, I'm not going to wake up. If it's extremely aggravating and loud so early in the a.m., then that's what's going to wake me up. So, yeah, it was just one of those nights. I was like, "Uh, I don't know if I'm going to wake up. I don't trust myself. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you feel me, if this has happened to you, because that was me last night. But regardless of that happening, I still have had a great day. I've taught my morning classes, I got a good workout in, and I definitely am feeling a little bit sore and like fatigue. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great, ready to continue to have a fabulous day and just have a good and strong start to my rest of the week, set new goals, set new intentions, and I'm just excited to fulfill them. So with that being said, I'm really excited to talk about today's topic, which is all about post-workout nutrition. You know, we're going to discuss what to eat after a workout, why is post-workout nutrition important, and does timing matter when it comes to nutrition? So is nutrition timing a thing? We're going to get into all of the nitty-gritty details on today's episode, so definitely don't miss out. I'll also be sharing with you guys my personal favorite things to eat post-workout nutrition. This is something I'm very passionate about. You know, I always tell my clients and the members at the gym that I train at that you are like putting all this effort into your workouts and, you know, you're wanting to like perform better and you want to aesthetically reach your goals and whatnot. 
but without the proper nutrition, but most importantly, post-workout nutrition, that's going to hinder, you know, the goals a little bit. And again, we're going to get into the why of why that is in just a short second. So like I said, you know, you put in a lot of effort into your workouts, into your training, always looking to perform better and reach your goals aesthetically and, you know, just trying to perform better, feel stronger. And chances are you've given more thought to your pre-workout meal than your post-workout meal, right? I hear this often with clients of mine who are like, oh, like either I didn't eat before my workout or like, oh, I had such a huge breakfast, I had this, I had that, which pre-workout nutrition is important, but in my personal opinion, both are important, okay? They're both important, but like I try to focus a little more on my post-workout nutrition than my pre-workout. Since I work out so early in the morning, I honestly don't really eat anything prior to my workout. I really don't. Um, re- I wake up four, I'm anywhere between four to five in the morning. I get dressed really quick from work, you know, brush my teeth and go downstairs and make some coffee. And really my coffee is like my pre-workout. So I drink my coffee, I go to work, I teach my classes. And right after I'm done teaching classes, that's when I train. And then when I get home, once I'm done with my training, then I really fuel up with my post-workout nutrition. So again, I think the pre-workout meal is really, it differs and it's case by case. Um, do I recommend everyone follow the same steps that I do? No, I'm not going to tell every single one of my clients, you know, to not eat before training or to just have coffee like I do. I do this because, again, it's just the way my schedule is set up and I like to train right after I'm done teaching classes in the early a.m. However, if I'm training mid-morning, say, like 11 a.m., 10 a.m., then I will eat something small, though, something small uh, pre-workout. Like I'll do like a bagel with avocado toast and I'll do that an hour before um, heading into my training. I found that if I eat like even 30 minutes before working out, I feel really sluggish and almost tired. Like, I don't know. I I don't feel my best when I eat a huge meal pre-workout or if I eat too soon pre-workout. Does that make sense? So again, it's a case by case. I'm not saying that you guys should eat a bagel with avocado right before training. I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat anything at all. I think it's really you have to listen to your body. If you are feeling really fatigued going into a workout, maybe you need, you know, some sugar. And that's when like a a banana would help, you know, give you some natural sugar, eat some fruit. So it really just depends. Like I don't really lack energy when it comes to the gym. So I really don't feel the need to supply my body with natural sugar or even with pre-workout. So again, that is just me. With all of that being said, I know I just went on a huge rant about pre-workout meals. Um, but again, this is just from my my experience talking with other people, um, clients, and a lot of them tend to give more thought to pre-workout meal rather than their post-workout meal. And I'm like a huge advocate for post-workout nutrition um, and consuming the right nutrients after you exercise is just as important as what you eat before. So I'm going to lay out basically like a detailed guide on today's episode to optimal nutrition after workouts. Again, keyword guide. I'm not saying this is a cookie cutter program that you have to, you know, do step by step. Absolutely not. I do not believe in cookie cutter programs when it comes to fitness because we are all so different. We all like mechanically move different and need different things for our bodies to heal and grow and just become stronger. So again, I'm going to cut into a very brief break right now. And when we come back, I'll discuss in greater detail this guide to optimal nutrition after your workouts. We'll be right back.
Are you looking to learn more about the latest trends from the fitness world? Are you confused by all the different trends that are out there? The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place for you. The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place to come for people of all skill and interest levels. Join us as we explore the latest trends in the fitness world. Does that new exercise really work? Should I try yoga? Whatever your question, chances are good you'll find an answer on the GSMC Fitness Podcast. up you guys welcome back to gsmc health and wellness podcast so we're just gonna dive right into it you guys already know post-workout nutrition is essential so we're gonna now i'm gonna tell you or help you understand why post-workout nutrition is so important to understand how the right foods can help you after exercise it's important to understand how your body is affected by physical activity first. When you're working out, your muscles use up their glycogen stores for fuel. And this results in your muscles being partially depleted of glycogen. Some of the proteins in your muscles also get broken down and damaged. So after your workout, your body tries to rebuild its glycogen stores and repair and regrow those muscle proteins that were, you know, demolished in your workout. Eating the right nutrients soon after you exercise can help your body get this done faster. And it's particularly important to eat carbs and protein after your workout. Like, I am a huge advocate for carbs. I don't care what your fitness trainer or fitness coach says. If you are working with a fitness trainer or a fitness coach that tells you to cut out carbs, newsflash, honey, you need to find yourself a new fitness trainer, fitness coach, because that is not it. You do not need to cut out carbs. Carbs are so vital in not even just fitness, just like your life, period. And I'm going to explain why as we go through today's episode. So by eating the right nutrients soon after you're done exercising, doing this helps your body decrease muscle protein breakdown. It increases muscle protein synthesis, aka growth. So if your main goal right now in your training regimen is for hypertrophy, you know, growing your glutes, growing your chest, whatever muscle group you're trying to grow having the appropriate nutrient profile after a workout is going to help increase um, this muscle protein synthesis aka growth cycle also like i just mentioned eating the right nutrients post-workout is going to help restore your glycogen stores that you need you know restored for fuel during your workouts and lastly, it also just enhances recovery. And I've said this time and time again throughout the episode, or not throughout this episode, but just throughout all of the episodes that I've talked about fitness um, at the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast, that recovery is so important. Just how people tend to focus more on actual exercise and recovery that or sorry i meant just how people focus more on pre-workout nutrition versus post-workout nutrition that's the same thing for recovery people focus too much on training which is which is very important but they don't focus enough on recovery you build muscle and you this is really where um you see the biggest difference where the difference is happening in your recovery not while you're training you're not losing weight while you're training. That fat loss, that muscle building, all of that that I mentioned happens during your recovery. So that's going to look like taking the time, uh, an off day to just stretch, just foam roll. That's going to look like getting adequate amount of sleep. 
all right? Ideally, seven to eight hours. That's going to look like drinking a lot of freaking water and eating the right nutrients. So recovery, again, you're not going to be able to reach your most optimal fitness and health goals if you don't take the time to focus on recovery as much as you do on your training and your workouts. So again, getting in the right nutrients after exercise can help you rebuild your muscle proteins and glycogen stores, and it also helps stimulate growth of new muscle. So with that being said, I've been saying a lot about, you know, right nutrients, right nutrients, appropriate nutrient profile. What does that mean? I'm talking about protein, carbs, and fat. You know, our our main macronutrients that I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. So right now I'm going to discuss how each macronutrient is involved in your body's post-workout recovery process. So let's start with the most essential or one of the most essential macronutrients. Well, they're all essential, right? That's why it's macro, duh. Okay, that was like poor verbiage on my part. But protein, I think protein you know, is a huge discussion in the health and fitness world. We don't really understand, or I feel like a lot of members don't really understand why trainers and fitness coaches, you know, emphasize the importance of eating adequate amount of protein, um, especially post-workout. And this is because protein helps repair and build muscle. As I just explained, Exercise triggers the breakdown of muscle protein, right? The rate at which this happens depends on the exercise and your level of training. But even well-trained athletes experience muscle protein breakdown, of course. Like even your favorite football, basketball player, um, LeBron, if y'all watching the finals right now, the Lakers versus uh, Miami Heat, They, these well-trained professional athletes experience muscle breakdown, okay? It doesn't matter what fitness level you're at, everyone's, you know, goes through this. And because of this muscle protein breakdown that happens during um, your workouts, consuming an adequate amount of protein after a workout gives your body the amino acids it needs to repair and rebuild these proteins, They're literally building blocks, you guys. Like think of protein and these amino acids as building blocks, okay? Building blocks required to build new muscle tissue. It's recommended that you consume 0.14 to 0.23 grams of protein per pound of body weight or if we're doing this by kilograms, it's 0.3 to 0.5 grams Per kilogram very soon after a workout okay like again I'm gonna get into more of the timing and everything um, in the later segments but in my personal journey I like to eat or drink um, a very high calorie high protein shake within ideally ideally 30 minutes of my workout but sometimes um an hour, but I won't let it exceed past an hour. Studies have shown that ingesting 20 to 40 grams of protein seems to maximize the body's ability to recover after exercise. Okay, so again, tw- in between 20 to 40 grams of protein is ideal um, for your body to recover post-workout. And those grams are really going to differ based on um, weight However, with that being said, I've seen people post their little MyFitnessPal um, macro trackers on Instagram on their stories. And I've seen people post um, their meals that have like 60 grams of protein. And in my mind, I just think like, why that high? Like, you don't need a meal that has 60 grams of protein in it. Your body can't even ingest and process that much protein at once. That's why like timing and just spreading out your macronutrient profile throughout all of your meals throughout your day is important. Like you can't ingest all of your protein 
in one sitting. So again, I just want to really emphasize post-workout and even not just post-workout, just with any meal that you curate that do not exceed 40 grams of protein, okay? Your body literally cannot process more than 40 grams of protein. So that's the protein talk, right? Let's move on to carbs. Ooh, this is a good one because people are scared of carbs. And I'm here to tell you carbs are your friend, okay? I love carbs. I'm never going to give up carbs. You need carbs, okay? Carbs help with recovery. And they are also your body's main source of fuel. Your body's glycogen stores are used as fuel during exercise, you guys. And consuming carbs after your workout helps replenish them, which is literally crazy to me that people follow like a keto diet or very low carb diets because I'm like, how are you like literally functioning? Like straight up, like how are you functioning with this very little amount of protein in your, or of carbs, sorry, in your life? Like I literally will get a headache. So we're going to come to a very brief break right now, y'all. And when we come back, we're going to discuss how carbs and why carbs are important for post-workout nutrition. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hey guys, welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. Let's get straight into it. Carbs, why are they important? Why should you not eliminate them? Why are they needed for post-workout nutrition? Why you should change fitness trainers, fitness coaches, if your coach is telling you to not eat carbs. I'm going to tell you why right now. So like I said right before we went on break, Carbs assist your body with recovery. Your body's glycogen stores are used as fuel during exercise and eating carbs post-workout helps replenish them, okay? It's literally your fuel. The rate at which your glycogen stores are used depends on the activity. For example, um, endurance sports cause your body to use more glycogen than resistance training or like conditioning, you know, anything very high intensity, hit cardio, um, you know, things of that nature are going to use up more glycogen than weight training, resistance training. For this reason, if you participate in any type of endurance sports activity, such as running, swimming, etc., you might need to consume more carbs than a bodybuilder. I know, crazy, right? You would think these cardio fanatics like don't eat any carbs because they're so thin. But again, this just goes back to the myth that carbs make you fat. Carbs don't make you fat, y'all. Eating in a calorie surplus and eating the wrong foods in a calorie surplus is going to make you, air quote, fat. Okay, so 
consuming 0.5 to 0.7 grams of carbs per pound. Uh, For kilograms, it's 1.1 to 1.5 grams of kilograms of body weight within 30 minutes after training results in proper glycogen resynthesis. So again, ideally you want to get those carbs in within 30 minutes post-workout. Also, Insulin secretion, which promotes glycogen synthesis, is better stimulated when carbs and protein are consumed at the same time, okay? So that's why when I make my post-workout shake, I put oats in that thing, I put banana in that thing, I put almond butter in that thing. I mean, almond butter is a good source of fat, which again, we'll get into why fat is also important, but my protein shake is really carb heavy really protein heavy of course because i'm trying to gain muscle trying to get slim thick with it you feel me but anyway yes so insulin secretion it promotes glycogen synthesis and it is you just get better results when both carbs and protein are consumed at the same time so ladies men don't be afraid of carbs Carbs are your friend, okay? So with that being said, consuming both carbs and protein after exercise can maximize protein and glycogen synthesis, aka faster recovery, aka a speedier growth. So try consuming the two in a ratio of three to one, carbs to protein. For example, If you consume, are going to consume 40 grams of protein, you're going to want around 120 grams of carbs. And again, this is just an estimate. This is a guide, like I said in the very beginning of the episode. So don't like, you know, it's not cookie cutter. You can follow it. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, then, you know, adjust the numbers, adjust it so that it fits your needs. Eating plenty of carbs to rebuild glycogen stores is most important for people who exercise often, such as, um, you know, twice in the same day. If you have one or two days to rest between workouts, then this becomes less important. But for all of my fitness fanatics out there who just love to stay active, work out twice a day, or you work out like six times a week, You're going to want to focus on rebuilding those glycogen stores and you're going to want to be eating plenty of carbs, okay? Carbs are your friend. I will live and die by that, okay? I am (laughs) pro-carbs. All right, so now that we got protein and carbs out the way, let's discuss the final super important macronutrient and that is fat, okay? So again, fat doesn't make you fat. And fat is not bad. Many people think that eating fat after a workout slows down digestion and inhibits the absorption of nutrients. While fat might slow down the absorption of your post-workout meal, it won't reduce its benefits, okay? For example, a study showed that whole milk was more effective at promoting muscle growth after a workout than, say, like, mm, skim milk. Moreover, another study showed that even when ingesting a high-fat meal, say 45% energy from fat after working out, muscle glycogen synthesis was not affected. So... It might be a good idea to limit the amount of fat you eat after exercise, but having some fat in your post-workout meal will not affect recovery. That's why I add a tablespoon of almond butter. Um, I really do this to make my smoothie a very high-calorie smoothie. As I mentioned, my main focus right now is to build muscle. I have been trying to build muscle, specifically build my lower body for quite some time now. And, you know, it's just been trial and error with me. And I've been like switching ingredients around. I've been carb cycling unintentionally, just trying to play around with my body and see what's working, what's not. 
And so far, adding almond butter to my post-workout nutrition has been great. It makes my smoothie really tasty, a nice nutty flavor. And I'm a fan. So I am a fan. The bottom line, you guys, a post-workout meal with both protein and carbs will enhance glycogen storage and muscle protein synthesis, which we want and we need. And consuming a ratio of three to one carbs to protein is a practical way to achieve this. But again, this is not cookie cutter. Play around with the numbers and see what what fits you best. So let's now move on to the timing, you know, the timing of your post-workout meal and why it matters. Your body's ability to rebuild glycogen and protein is enhanced after you exercise. For this reason, it's recommended that you consume a combination of carbs and protein as soon as possible after exercising, okay? Like, Every time I'm done with classes, I literally like remind my members like y'all better go home and not do anything else. But besides eat a healthy post-workout meal, post-workout shake, something. All right. Like don't just not eat. I get on my brother a lot about that because he takes my classes actually sometimes and you know, I have to stay like 15 minutes later to clean up and whatnot. And I'll pull up to the house and I see he's like chilling on the sofa. And I'm like, dude, first of all, that's gross because you have to have been sweating and you're sitting on the sofa. Not a fan of outside clothes touching furniture. OK, second of all, you need to be making a protein shake because you just demolished your muscles right now. And we need to repair those muscles with a high protein, high carb post-workout meal. You feel me? And I literally stress out for him, for his timing. Like, I'm like, you need to do this as soon as possible to really enhance, you know, your glycogen and protein stores. So although, with that being said, although the timing does not need to be exact, Many experts recommend eating your post-workout meal within 45 minutes. You know, I think that's a good window. If you could do 30 minutes, perfect. 45, good. No more than an hour later, okay? In fact, it's believed that the delay of carb consumption by as little as two hours after a workout may lead to as much as 50% lower rates of glycogen synthesis. Again, I'm going to read that to y'all again so it really clicks and sits in your mind. If you delay your carb and protein consumption, aka your post-workout nutrient-dense meal, by two hours even, you're going to have a 50% lower rate of glycogen synthesis, lower rate of protein synthesis. And that's not what you want, all right? However, If you consumed a meal before exercising, it's likely that the benefits from that meal still apply after training, but I wouldn't like just depend on that. Like I'd still get a post-workout meal in. Post-workout nutrition is key, key, key. So let me reiterate that in case you guys like tapped out for a second, tuned me out for a sec. Eat your post-workout meal within 45 minutes of exercise, okay? Ideally, within 45 minutes. However, you can extend this period a little longer depending on the timing of your pre-workout meal. But still, get it in if you can. So you guys, we're going to cut into a very brief break right now. And when we come back, I'm going to share with you guys a list of foods that you should eat after you work out.
the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Hey guys, welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. We're now going to be talking about where I'm going to be sharing with you guys foods to eat after you work out. Again, this is just a list. These are just ideas I'm throwing at you to spark something in your mind, get the wheels turning a little bit, you feel me? So again, the primary goal of your post-workout meal is to supply your body with the right nutrients for adequate recovery and to maximize the benefits of your workout, right? So choosing easily digested foods will promote faster nutrient absorption. So I have curated a sweet list for y'all here for carbs, for protein, and fats. Um, So I've curated a list here that contains examples of simple and easily digested foods as well as some sample post-workout meals. So y'all are not going to want to miss out. I'm putting y'all on game right now. So listen up. For carbs, these are going to be some great carb sources to consume post-workout. My personal favorite, sweet potatoes. Yum. Yum. Uh, chocolate milk, actually, which this was like the first time I really got into post-workout nutrition years ago, like elementary school. I remember my PE teacher would like always um, push us to drink chocolate milk after a PE class, which I didn't really understand. But now that I've gotten older, I've done my research, I'm certified, I'm constantly learning about new things and revisiting things I used to do when I was younger in terms of exercise and health. And chocolate milk has really been one of the OG post-workout snacks. Um, Let me know in the comments if you guys know what I'm talking about because chocolate milk was it. It still is, but I'm just non-dairy. You feel me? Uh Anyway, sweet potatoes, uh, chocolate milk. We got quinoa. Uh, fruits. Fruits are amazing sources of carbs. So fruits like pineapple, uh, any type of berries, banana and kiwi, all great choices. Uh, rice cakes are going to be great as well. Rice, um, oatmeal, potatoes, pasta, um, dark leafy green vegetables, All of that stuff is going to be amazing carb sources. Um, I think it's also going to depend the time of day you consume, you know, you work out. So if I'm working out early in the morning, I'm probably not going to have pasta for breakfast. You feel me? As a post-workout snack, I'm probably going to lean more towards oatmeal, um, fruits, things like that. So those are our carb sources. Let's move on to great protein sources um, post-workout. So that's going to be, of course, animal or plant-based protein powder. I'm for the plant-based. Y'all already know, plant-based gang out here. Um, I use blessed plant protein. It's made of uh, pea protein. It's so good. I've never tasted a plant-based protein that's as delicious as blessed. And I've tried whey protein before, and that just hurts my stomach. 
Again, I've been non-dairy for like six years now, but I've been plant-based for the last eight weeks and I feel absolutely amazing. Again, this isn't me trying to push the plant-based agenda out on y'all who do eat animal-based products. That's fine. Um, I'm just sharing with you guys what works for me and what I prefer. So again, you know, any protein powder will do. Eggs are going to be another one. Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, salmon, chicken, protein bar, tuna. For all of my vegan friendly people out there, um, any tofu type of meal is going to be great as well. Uh, Tempeh is another good one. So lots of protein sources out there that you can consume post-workout. It's really never ending. Um, Very rarely you know, very rare, I mean, do anyone here in America experience a protein deficiency? If anything, we exceed our protein intake. Um, So really protein, y'all, I'm not too worried about for you guys. You shouldn't be either unless you're like really trying to gain weight. Then, you know, obviously make sure you're hitting those protein um, amounts that you're reaching for. And lastly, good fat sources for a protein snack post-workout nutrition. Um, Did I say protein snack? (laughs) Y'all know what I meant. Post-workout snack, post-workout nutrition. So I've mentioned a few of these already. Fats are going to include avocado, uh, nuts, uh, nut butter such as almond butter, cashew butter, etc. Trail mix like dried fruits and nuts. All of those are good fat sources. So now I'm going to share with you guys, um, you know, combinations of foods that I've listed that can create great meals that provide you with all the nutrients you need after exercise. So here are some sample post-workout meals I have created. They're quick and easy meals to eat after your workout. I know a lot of you may work out right before going into work. So I know something that's quick and easy is really ideal for a lot of you. So I got you. Of course, meal prepping is going to be a big thing. Like if you can meal prep the night before for the week, that's going to really help you. Um, So like grilled chicken with roasted vegetables, Um, egg omelet with avocado spread on toast, salmon with sweet potato, tuna salad sandwich on whole grain bread, Uh, tuna and crackers, oatmeal, whey protein, banana and almonds. Uh, cottage cheese and fruits, pita bread and hummus, rice crackers and peanut butter, whole grain toast and almond butter, cereal and skim milk, Greek yogurt, berries and granola, protein shake and banana, quinoa bowl with berries and pecans, and multi-grain bread and raw peanuts. So, I really got y'all your back right now. I've curated, I think, a pretty sweet list here of high carb, high protein um, post workout snacks that are really gonna help enhance, um, you know, your protein synthesis, your glycogen synthesis, and just help you reach your goals in a more efficient way. Right. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to put y'all on game. So I hope y'all are really taking notes and tapping into what I'm sharing. So with that being said, I also want to really emphasize, um, you know, water, H2O, because I think that's also another factor of post-workout nutrition that's really important. And I think people often glance over that. As most of us know, it's important to drink plenty of water before and after your workout. Um, When you are properly hydrated, this ensures the optimal internal environment for your body to maximize results, okay? So during exercise, you lose water and electrolytes through sweat. And replenishing these after a workout can help with recovery and performance as well. 
So it's especially important to replenish fluids if your next exercise session is within 12 hours. Depending on the intensity of your workout, um, water or an electrolyte drink are recommended to replenish fluid losses. So again, I just want to highlight how important it is to get water and electrolytes after exercise to replace what was lost during your workout. And I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all. This is something that even myself, I'm still like trying to get better at. I can honestly say that my water intake isn't where it needs to be. That is something that I need to put a little more effort in. I feel like I drink a lot of water while I'm working out, intra-workout, but post-workout, I feel like I sometimes forget. Like I'm more focused on my high-calorie, high-protein, high-carb post-workout shake, and I don't emphasize for myself the importance of drinking enough water as well. So it's just really important to put it all together, right? Like consuming a proper amount of carbs and protein after exercise is essential, just as essential it is to drink plenty of fluid and water after your workout. All of this will stimulate muscle protein synthesis, will improve recovery, and enhance performance during your next workout. If you're not able to eat within 45 minutes of working out, it's important to not go much longer than, honestly, an hour before eating a meal. So replenishing lost water and electrolytes, all of that can complete the picture and help you maximize the benefits of your workout, right? Because that's what we're trying to do when it comes to health and fitness and training. We're trying to maximize our results. We're trying to reach our goals, not just as quickly as possible. I don't think that's the most important part, but as efficiently as possible. I think being efficient is more important than being quick and fast and reaching your goals. We're going to come to a very brief break right now. And when we come back, more on post-workout nutrition. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. We are now entering the final segment of today's show. I feel like that totally just flew by. It could be because I was honestly very enthusiastic about talking, um, everything in regards to post-workout nutrition. Like I said, this is a conversation I have all the time with clients and like even just family members, just anyone who wants to talk fitness with me, like this topic always tends to come up because I think post-workout nutrition is a topic that tends to be overlooked and I think it's important to shed some light on the benefits of giving your body what it needs to recover, especially, you know, after an intense workout, uh, your body needs to be refueled and when you don't replenish your body, it can leave you feeling fatigued and it can stall the recovery process. So when you don't restore what you have lost, it will put your body at risk of further damage during your next workout. So 
really this is mainly just all injury prevention in my eyes. And I, again, I'm all for injury prevention. Like, I think that if you are somebody who wakes up in the morning pain-free, you can sit on the toilet comfortably, you can walk up and down your stairs comfortably, you can get in a car comfortably and drive comfortably, we are blessed, y'all. Like, to be able to move like that freely, pain-free, is something that we shouldn't take for granted. This is something that I am constantly reminding myself to be grateful for because there are so many people who experience uh, pains and discomforts, whether it be low back, knees, joints, whatever it is. And a lot of that, not every single case, of course, but a lot of that has to do with nutrition and especially post-workout nutrition. That's really how you're able to refuel your body and just prevent your body from further damage. So with that being said, I already gave y'all basically what to do, the why of post-workout nutrition, right? I said to fuel your body with protein. I've talked about how to increase your glycogen stores and intake, how you know to eat the right kind of carbs, and how to satisfy your meal with healthy fats, carbs, etc., now for this final segment, I'm going to share with y'all some of the don'ts, the do nots when it comes to post-workout nutrition. So don't go anywhere and keep on listening. For one, you should stay away from unknown ingredients. When it comes to the foods you do not want to eat after workouts, it can get confusing But a rule that I go by is if you don't know what the ingredients are, you probably shouldn't be eating it. If it sounds like a science experiment, you probably shouldn't be eating it, right? Most things that are packaged are usually processed and full of sugar along with other preservatives. If you do eat something processed, again, be sure to check out the list of ingredients. If you don't understand more than three of these ingredients, just... Avoid it altogether, I say. All right? So that's the main don't for post-workout nutrition. The second, which a lot of you may be surprised, maybe, don't eat spicy food. Spicy foods are also best to avoid post-workout. Foods that are prepared with hot spices like chili peppers or cayenne pepper, um, they contain a potent ingredient known as capsaicin, which is an irritant to our body. And spicy food stimulates the digestive system and can cause heartburn and diarrhea, especially after your body has used up energy during your workout. Your body is trying to repair itself, which is why it's important to choose foods that are easy to digest. So again, that's the key word easy digestible foods and trust me like don't be alarmed i'm not saying completely eliminate spicy food i'm just suggesting that eating spicy food is not ideal post-workout i love spicy food okay so as a person who loves spicy food i'm not gonna tell you to not eat spicy food you feel me just not post-workout avoid it next Avoid unnecessary sugars. Stick to real whole foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and clean antibiotic and hormone-free meats. Lots of sports drinks as well and energy bars and even protein shakes have hidden ingredients that aren't helpful in the recovery process. They can be very deceiving since they are marketed toward athletes. You know, it's like, oh, high protein, this, this, and that. Like, they really emphasize the protein portion. But that's why I always suggest to read the ingredient list, check the macros, how much sugar is in the protein bar. Because trust me, many of these, like, energy protein bars I read, and it's, like, 23 grams of sugar. Like, what? That's, like, the same amount, if not more amount of protein in the bar like it doesn't make sense so 
most of these bars and protein shakes and sports drinks are loaded with unnecessary sugars, making them a poor option post-workout. That's why I'd opt if you can and have the time to get a post-workout meal from your home. You make it personally. And lastly, skip the alcohol. Alcohol is a big no-no after workouts. It might sound fun, you know, to grab a celebratory drink after crushing at the gym. You know, brunch date with the girls. I get it. I get it. But keep in mind, y'all, that alcohol slows down the repair process of exercise-induced muscle damage by inhibiting the production of certain hormones that are used to help, like testosterone. And alcohol is also a diuretic. So when you are already dehydrated after a workout, this will only delay the recovery process more. And honestly, this last don't of skipping alcohol can really be applied not even just post-workout nutrition, but just in overall your health fitness journey. I'm not saying completely cut out alcohol, but you're definitely going to want to eliminate alcohol consumption if you are trying to lose weight or if you're trying to gain muscle. Like that deeply, deeply hinders your goals. Alcohol does, okay? So just keep that in mind, y'all. And... Again, just to reiterate, the four don't of post-workout nutrition. Stay away from unknown ingredients that sound like chemical experience from the lab, all right? Um, Don't eat spicy food. Avoid unnecessary sugars and skip the alcohol, okay? Those are my four post-workout don'ts. So, you guys, that's going to wrap up today's episode here at the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. I hope y'all learned a thing or two and found this episode to be super valuable. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff because that tremendously helps the show. And I'll catch you guys here for the next one. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Health and Wellness Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program